Hello everybody, welcome to episode 4 of the Garden of Eden. Now, today I'm going to review WWE Night of Champions. My first wrestling video in a while, but anyway, on to, before I start, I just want to say that the pay-per-view was one of the best of the year. It was, it had every single match on it, apart from one match, which had a reason, which was to advance the storyline, was a good match. Now, first of all, we had Finley and Hornswoggle versus Miz and Morrison. Now, I do like both teams, and I was a bit, I didn't know who to cheer on, because I do like Finley and Hornswoggle, but the edge slightly went to <coughs> Miz and Morrison. But they had they had a really good match and it was a it was a really good opener. It, it was it was a good way to open a pay per view. Maybe maybe not a good idea for the Haves to win as, as an opener of a pay per view, but it was a good it was a good opening match and one amazing match. And the next match was it was a great wrestling match again. It was it was an epic match, but it was a disgrace because Chavo Guerrero should not be doing a job to Matt Hardy. Chavo Guerrero should not be losing to Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy, Chavo Guerrero is going to be a Hall of Famer someday. Hardy, Hardy might not be. He probably get, if he's going to get inducted, he'll get in, he'll get inducted with Jeff. But it was a good match, and even though it was a disgrace. Chavito winning, Chavito losing. It was a good match. It didn't let, it didn't let me down. Now, <clears throat> probably people who shouldn't have won, the next match was the ACW World Title Match. And as you all know by now, Mark Henry was the winner. It was a bad decision, Mark Henry winning. But, if you think about it, well, if you think about it, the title needed to come back to ECW. I, I don't know why Kane was drafted in the first place. It doesn't make any sense to me, but that's the way it was. And surprisingly, the three men actually put on quite a good match. It, it wasn't a bad match at all. It, uh, it was a good effort from them three men. And a good match. But the end result, the end result wasn't so good. Anyway, the next match was... The only bad match of the night, really. Hardcore Holly versus Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase for the tag team titles. Now, I'm happy enough with Cody Boy turning on Hardcore Holly. Um, the a tag team of Ted DiBiase is pretty good. Cody Rhodes, there was a lot of hype with Cody before he came to the WWE. And there was a lot of, there was a lot of negativity surrounding him in his face run. But, from the two promos that I've seen of this, or of this, here's Cody Rhodes. Cody is going to make it. Cody is going to be big. As a heel, not as a face, but it wasn't, it wasn't going to be a good match. It was one minute, 30 seconds long. Anyway, the next match was match of the night. Def I, I would definitely say Kobe Kingston versus Chris Jericho was match of the night. This was, this was Kobe Kingston's Raw, they debut as a Raw wrestler. And I think, I think that Kobe said to himself that, that he was going to make this, that, that he was going to win, because he was going to win the title. But I think he said to himself that he would put on a great show in doing it. But the only problem came in to me was, was Shawn Michaels costing Jericho the title. And Jericho shouldn't be, it's true that Jericho shouldn't be jobbing the Kingston right now, but with interference, it makes both of them look worse. Anyway, great match. And Kobe Kingston, he's going to have a bright future. He's going to be a good champion. Because the Intercontinental title, it's for young people now. It's for young wrestlers. It's not for guys like established guys like Hardy or Jericho to hold and to never defend. It's for people like Kobe Kingston to elevate them. To have to give them a title that they can defend every week and and look good. Anyway, great match. <clears throat> Next of all, 
we had Mickey James versus Katie Lee Burchill. And that's, it was one of the best Steve matches I've seen this year. But even that, even that couldn't keep the crowd interested. This proves that no one cares about the Divas. No one cares about them anymore. They should have retired the title. They're going to add on another title soon. I mean, I'm glad there wasn't two, ma two women's matches on my card. For a start, the SmackDown one would have ruined the show. Because, don't get me wrong, that match, Mickey James versus Katie Virgil, it was a good match. Anyway, on the edge versus Batista. Once again, another, a, another good match. Uh, another a good showing for Batista. But don't you find it funny that Batista's only good matches have been against three people? Batista versus Triple H, Batista versus The Undertaker, and Batista versus The Edge. It's, it's no coincidence that this is three people who can carry someone like Batista to good matches. But it was a good match. Uh, uh, Batista did some of the job. But to be honest, I, I, was, I was celebrating whenever Batista got clocked with the title by Edge and whenever he got pinned one, two, three. Because I don't want to see Batista with another World Heavyweight title. Anyway, I'm going to talk now about something that spoiled, that actually, it actually spoiled the match for me. Because they had, the night after, a CM Punk cashed in his money in the bank briefcase and beat Edge. So, I'm not the biggest CM Punk fan. I mean, Punk was dropping the Miz cleanly a month ago. And now he's leading WWE's flagship show. That, it doesn't make any sense. But, it's, they had to do it at all. They elevate Punk. Why did they not do it at Night of Champions? It would, have, it would have made the pay-per-view more special. Why do it in Raw whenever you can have as the great moments of Night of Champions by having Punk cash in on that night? So that's a shame. That is a shame, but it was a great match. Anyway, on to the main event. Triple H versus John Cena. And second best match of the night. Another amazing... The crowd shouldn't have... The crowd weren't as, weren't as into it as they should have been. Because this was... Because this was Triple H versus John Cena too, and there was reversal after reversal, finisher move after finisher move, submission hold after submission hold. It was a great match, and it was a it was a she. It was a shame that the crowd weren't into it so that 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 much. There was the point whenever Cena and Triple H were both punching each other, and the crowd were really into that, but they did spoil it a bit. I mean, I was a, I was a Triple H hater for his politicking recently, up until Triple H joined SmackDown, because I respect him for that, for going to SmackDown, and it, it was a good move. So I was, before before this whole draft thing, I would have been 100% for Cena, but I wasn't. I was 50-50 neutral, and I enjoyed the match a lot. And this proves it. It proves it all you John Cena. People who say Cena can't wrestle like, like wrestle guru. People who made careers out of saying YouTube careers out of saying that Cena can't wrestle. It proves them wrong. I mean, you want to hate on someone for not being able to wrestle. Hate on, hate on Batista. Or Matt Hardy. Or Cali or someone like that. Don't hate on Cena because he's proved by now that he can put on good matches every single night. Anyway, I would give Night of Champions 9 out of 10 because it was a great pay-per-view and it, it's on the same level right now as pay-per-views like SummerSlam and Survivor Series and the Royal Rumble and I can't wait for it next year. So thank you WWE for a great pay-per-view. This is the Garden of Eden, Episode 3, 9 out of 10. Goodbye.